Welcome to Initiate Swarm Protocol. I'm Darth Wing Amuck. I am Doomsayer. What are we talking about in this video? Some of the best games we've ever played. Let's start the show. Another game that I think is, it's one of the best horror games of all time. And I am huge into whether it's horror movies, comics, video games, big time into video games. They're doing a remake this year, or I should say actually next year comes out uh, January, Dead Space. I got to check out the remake. I missed out on the originals. There was a 14 or 15 year anniversary on Friday that they were showing what the old Dead Space was to what the new Dead Space is and how it yeah. looks. Oh my God. I'm I mean, sure I, it looks amazing. From what I remember, the original looked amazing. Oh yeah. Listen, yeah. The, the, the original still stands up today. I played it last year. Um, I platinum it. I'm very proud of that, but it is, it still looks like a very good game in that. I have toys of it. Uh, the necromorphs in that, um, I've tried to go out and buy, you know, even the plasma cutter, but that game, it was such a callback to the resident evils in that, but it was just so much more claustrophobic. I mean, you're you're on. I'm probably saying this wrong, but the Ishimura, um, you're on this ship. It's a der derelict ship. It's you know um, abandoned, apparently abandoned in that. But there's, it's it's called the Marker. It's an alien artifact in that, and it kind of like transforms human beings into these things called necromorphs and that. And they were actually starting to do experiments and everything on uh, the people that were on the ship and, and even on the planet and that stuff. But the thing is, is it's, it's brutal. It's gory. It scares the shit out of you. I mean, I've played it eight times and every time there is something in there that it didn't scare me before, but it, all of a sudden it scares the shit out of me again. Uh, you know, sorry for the language, but that's just the way it is. And then the, they just, you know, continued in the second one. You, they just advanced it. But with Dead Space 1, Isaac Clark, the character never talked. He was trying, when you first sit there and you actually play, you think you're going after your girlfriend or your love interest and that stuff. And you think she's actually alive. Until, you know, towards the end of the game that you actually find out that, you know, she's dead. Spoiler alert. If you haven't played, it's been out since 2008. Um, I played it on on the 360 and that stuff. It, I mean, it was incredible. Um, again, a great horror game. Great jump scares and everything. Uh, the Necromorphs. There's a uh, boss in there that... Even though you go and you cut off all its limbs, it just, it regenerates again. And it just keeps coming after you and coming after you. Like I said, it reminded me of uh, Resident Evil 2 with, well, I used to call him Lurch. The uh, guy in the uh, green trench coat. I don't know if you, uh, and he would just break through walls, just appear out of nowhere and all this stuff. I don't know if you remember that from Resident Evil 2. I, I specifically, yeah. yeah, I call him Lurch. He's, it's, he's called something else. He does but, have a, yeah, but I have a figure of him. But the thing is, is it, that that's the Mr. way. Mr. Oh, yeah. It, oh, it, I forget his name. I, yeah. I, that's another game that I'll bring up in that stuff. But, um, yeah, he just appears out of nowhere half the time. The, music and that stuff. It's just, everything about it is so eerie. And, you know, I love that uh, uh, Glenn Schofield was a part of that, and I can't wait to, you know, play Callista Protocol. But I got Batman Arkham Asylum. 
2009 for the PlayStation 3. A lot of games, even in life, I rely a lot on atmosphere. This is the second Batman game, right? That's the first first one. City was the second one. Okay. I love atmosphere. This game, the atmosphere was at 11. So dark. Yeah. So everything. It, it's like perfect. The Scarecrow part. Loved it. Graphics, the controls, the gadgets, the character design. Actually, seeing when this game came out, I didn't really care about it. But then I saw a picture of Scarecrow in uh, Game Informer. Yeah. And I'm like, I might have to check this out. And on a side note, uh, I have a uh, figure from McFarlane coming of Scarecrow. I have one. It's great. Oh, as soon as I saw that, Very I had to. Detailed. It was like, uh, great things. Uh, I love how the Joker taunts you over the PA. Remember that? Oh, yeah. That was so eerie. Like, yeah. And you got the uh, PS3 version, which had the exclusive uh, Joker mission in that, too. There was an exclusive Joker mission just exclusive oh, really? for the PS3. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I bought that in 2009. I remember playing some Joker yeah. stuff. That like was, downloading. there was an exclusive part to it or some kind of mission or something like that. But yeah. But then uh, all the secrets are all over this game. Did you find every riddle from the Riddler? I did not find. I think I found a good amount of them, but I didn't find everyone. But then all the. Uh, the Batman references. Remember when you could zoom in on something? Oh, yeah. And it gave, you know, yeah, like little... character. Like, I found a good amount of them. Stuff I didn't know. Because what I know about Batman, a lot comes from the cartoons. Right. Of course, Batman, the animated series, Justice League, you know, that stuff. And it's great. Mark Hamill, of course, the Joker. Surprise! <laughs> 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 You fell for the old sick Joker guy, Batman. Perfect. Perfect. I can pick his voice out. I think anybody can pick his voice out. Whenever he does something, that's Mark Hamill. And my Batman. Everybody argues who's the best Batman. I'm saying my Batman is Kevin Conroy from the animated series. He is my Batman. Nine years. Joker's opened every cell in Arkham. Really? Uh, yes, absolutely. 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 That was great. They got him. But the, uh, the first time you're sitting on a gargoyle and you get the ability to hang under it and then when an enemy walks under you and you come down and grab yeah. him. Yes. The first time that happened, I was like, this is the greatest game ever made. Like, that was so cool. Yeah, I can't even speak. I'm smiling. and <laughs> it That was so freaking cool to me. Yeah, that was great. I remember. I, I do remember playing that. I played, I, through that a, I played through that a couple times. Joker, the, the Joker all the way at the end was a pain in the ass. So was the, the Scarecrow mission. Because he yeah. puts you into that. Uh, he gets you the... Uh, um, Whatever the hallucination or hallucinogen is and that stuff, and you gotta, yeah. it's it's like a bunch of mazes and stuff like that. Yeah. And remember that part where you're walking down a hallway as Batman, but then the hallway starts changing into uh, the alley where Batman's parents got killed. Oh yeah. That was freaking, man. Those people, they knew, they knew what the fans wanted. Right. And they gave it to them. Great. Great game. I can't wait to go back and play that. Another game of mine is Red Dead Redemption. Oh, yeah. To me, it's definitely like a top three games of all time for me. Open world, but the thing, the John Marston thing. Now, I went and originally picked that game up 
like you sat there and said about pre-ordering and that. I pre-ordered that. Went the next day, I picked it up. The thing is, and I've done this with a lot of games, I did not play it for an entire year. Started playing it the very next summer in 2011. I think that came out in 2010. Yeah. Yep. Um, I, I couldn't stop playing that game. I went to work and talked about this game at work to anybody that I could talk to. It gave me the sort of the, the outlaw Josie Wales or the, the Clint Eastwood kind of uh, cowboy. I'm maybe a little bit of a spaghetti Western, you know, the outlaw Josie Wales pair rider and that kind of stuff. But just you sitting there and going back and saying about time change. That was the first game that I've ever seen time changing where it went from, you know, sunny, uh, you know, early morning, all of a sudden now it's dark, you're horseback riding and everything, going to all kinds of outposts and, and things like that. A Chupacabra. I mean, I remember uh, playing it on the 360 and there was a, uh, an achievement for finding a Chupacabra. A cryptid. Yeah, and what I don't know if it's 100% true that there is one out there or there are any, but just, you know, Rockstar throwing that in there. It was like, holy shit, really? Yeah, they always throw I, that stuff I in. mean, <laughs> it's, it's like, but another thing too is the gunplay and that stuff, it, it was good for at least that time and that. Um, the missions and everything, the music. I remember you coming to my house. We had a barbecue and that stuff. And I said, yo, Darth, did you ever hear this song? And I remember sitting there and I'm playing it for you. It's the song where he's going into Mexico. Yes. Yep. And that is one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard anywhere. And it just when he's riding in. Yeah. And you're just sitting there and you're riding and you're enjoying it. They knew how to pace that game. How, when to throw that in at the most perfect time. The feeling that you sit there and you get, just, you know, like I sat there and said with Scarface, that was a great soundtrack and everything. You know, you're driving around, whatever. This was different. It just it gave you like a, a sense of peace in a way. You're traveling, stuff like that. It was just amazing. But again, I don't even know. I, spoiler alert on this one too. This is the only, well, this is one of two games that has ever made me cry. And that's, of course, you know, Marston getting killed at the end. You know, the, all the, oh, yeah. the, the, the marshals coming up to him. They came to, they came to his house. Yeah. Um, and killed him in that. And it was like, that was, the one, to me, at that time, it was the saddest moment in video games for me. I've never experienced anything like that. Never. And didn't think I would ever sit there and experience that. But Rockstar, they're one of the best developers out there, bar none in that stuff. I oh, mean, yeah. the way they write their stories, they write their games in that, they know how to put the music in, like I said, where it needs to be. They know how to actually, you know, get the right music for the game in that. Uh, just the realism and everything that they put into their game. They do a lot of research in that stuff. And that's that's why Red Dead is, is one of the best games I ever played. I played Red Dead recently. And where John gets shot at the end, that is more gory now. For some reason, that's like, like he doesn't like fall down right away. He's still standing yeah. there like looking at him. like that's like. And of course, the map, you said the song, but the map. There's not one spot in that game I did not stand on. See, I uh, was everywhere in that game. And that's one, one thing I missed. I missed the hundred completion game because I forgot one little uh, side mission. I forget, it was helping out some kind of a lady or something towards the end of the game, and I wanted to push that until I beat it and then went went back to play it. 
and I missed it. That was the only mission I did not do. I played that game so much. I had like, well, at the in 2011, 75 hours into a game was a lot. Oh, hell yeah. Like, that was a lot. And I think you can blow through that game in like 14 hours. So I just wandered around shooting, selling stuff. I had like a quarter of a million dollars in money or something. It was insane. But I had like 500 grizzly bear kills, like 800 deer. It was insane. And I remember getting this game, again, seeing it in Game Informer. And it's like, huh, that, that seems interesting. But halfway through, I'm like, I hope they're making a part two. Which leads into Red Dead Redemption 2, 2018. We had to wait a little bit, like seven, eight years for this one. But uh, released originally, of course, for the PlayStation 4. Uh, Rockstar, like we said, they know how to make a world. Yeah. They make a living, breathing world. That you are in. When you are playing a Red Dead Redemption game, you are in that world. Uh, I like, I talk to people at work, and uh, one guy, uh, there's a ghost train. He saw the ghost train. I didn't see it, and another guy didn't see it. But then I saw stuff. Uh, one time I was hunting a boar down in the swamps. And I was ready to shoot it, and an alligator came up and grabbed the boar. Yeah, it was kind of brutal. But those guys didn't see that. But then the other guy at work that didn't see any of this, he said you pick up a guy on the side of the road, and you can take him to a doctor, and they'll cut off his arm. Like, none of us saw that. So we were I all know. seeing different things. Yeah, it's it, how Rockstar does that. Uh of course, uh, the hidden things. This video could be three hours and we talked about all the aliens, cults, uh, vampires, ghosts. This is in Red Dead 2? Oh, yeah. A lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff going on there. Anybody that played it knows it. But the landscape, just the landscapes. How you go from the mountains down to like open prairie swamps to a New Orleans city. It, it's, it's literally perfect. And the wildlife, like animals will fight each other. A, a eagle will come down and grab a fish out of a pond. If you're standing there like and watching it, it's, Oh my God. It's unbelievable. It's the first time I played it, it was overwhelming. But then once you, st in a good way, but once you start, understanding the gameplay it probably is one of the greatest games ever made how many times did you play it three i think i've gone through a three but wandered around just like red dead one i stood everywhere in this game i have been at every square inch of this map there's not and i'm sure there's a lot i haven't seen that's that's how detailed. Didn't and you sit there and tell me that the uh, the map in part two is is twice as big as the the first one in that stuff, or it's it the, has the first map, and then it adds except on to Mexico. It. it doesn't have Mexico. You know, okay. in the first one you go to Mexico. Obviously, we yeah. right. Uh, it doesn't have Mexico, but it has all like the the old map and the new map, and it's just. It's literally beautiful. And then again, spoiler alert, the character you play as dies. And the song playing, that was, liter that was literally heartbreaking. And his horse died. Oh, it was, it was so sad. So sad. I almost got, I got a little teary-eyed. Really? Just like in a video game. First time, it was like, oh man, the horse died. Yeah. You didn't cry. 
But no, you get, no, you I, got, get, I got teary eyed. I got teary eyed. I got. <laughs> and then it leads right into story. It leads right into Red Dead. Okay. Because this is a prequel. Yeah, because it, it, that's the whole. That's another reason why I haven't played Red Dead Two. Because like I, I've sat there. I've heard it that they're supposed to do something with Red Dead and Red Dead Two, enhance the, the Red Dead and do all that. So that's why I'm waiting to play it and that stuff. But. Um, I, I definitely will get to play it because I want to play it in, in order and all that stuff. So another game of mine and the, the first one is when I sat there and I saw this commercial and the commercial was using, um, the song from Donnie Darko. It was actually a remake of. I think it's called Cruel World. All around me are familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces. Hide my head, I want to drop. Yeah, from uh, Tears for Fears. Tears for Fears. And I can't remember the gentleman who um, remade it. I know the yeah, but it, it was it's a great song, uh, kind of uh, eerie in a way and that stuff. But when I sat there and I saw this commercial and they were playing this the song to it, it was Gears of War, and that was the whole purpose. That's the the main reason why I went out and I bought a three sixty. I actually remember bringing the three sixty up here uh, and showing you Gears of War and that stuff, but. Part two of Gears Two was such a it was such an advancement of what Gears was. Uh, the first one was a action uh, horror game. You know, it had horror effects, but it, there was a tons of action, loads of gore, and everything. I mean. You have a machine gun, basically an assault rifle that has a chainsaw on it that you can just go around cutting people up yeah. and all that stuff. Uh, but the thing is, is the story with part two. And if you haven't, if you never played Gears 2, I feel bad for you because, you know, again, spoilers and that stuff. But the biggest part in that game, and if you played it, is Dom sitting there and finding his wife. At the very beginning of the game, he goes to, I can't remember her name, but it's the blonde girl. He's asking her questions. Hey, have you, you know, have you found Maria? Do you know a location? That kind of thing. So it kind of set it up in a way, but they, they left, they just left it at that until you started going through the, uh, down to where the locusts were at and then going into, um, I'm just going to say their, their home and that stuff. And you actually start to find out what they were doing to the human beings and everything. They were kind of, I, I don't know if it was, they were like using them for slave work and that. Uh, and then when, when basically they were all used up and everything, they put them in these capsules just to, you know, basically die and wither away and, and all that stuff. But the part is, is you get down there and you sit there and, and there's a scene that Dom finds his wife in one of the capsules and he's sitting there and, you know, if anybody's married and that stuff and you still love your wife, you, you sit there and, you know, you're hurt by it because it's like, man, look what this guy is going through and everything. Even though you're playing Marcus Phoenix, Dom is there with you and you, you, you know, you go through that. That's what makes a great story, whether it's to a movie or a video game. Is you know bringing some kind of, um, uh, whether it's mood or like a uh, real emotion. Uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. emotion to it that you can feel something for that. Off of that, after the story, this is the first time they they brought out horde mode, which is you're basically fighting. I think it was like thirty levels of of locusts, and they you know just keep getting harder and harder and harder and that stuff. That was a very addicting uh, game mood because I sat there and played it with my sister, brother-in-law, you know, my uh, wife and that stuff, my cousin. We played it all the time in that. And then you included the multiplayer. It was 
the most complete game at that time because you you got all of this and it it just I played that the time it came out in I think it was it was either September or October uh Gears 2 came out I didn't stop playing that until the very next year and I hardly play games like that even with multiplayer and everything I don't I don't sit there and play them you know three, four months, and then I'm done with it. This game was a whole entire year. Couldn't wait for map packs, all this other stuff. Like I said, the multiplayer, the horde mode, the story, phenomenal. Um, just great. Just great. I got Super Mario Brothers 3. 1990 for the Nintendo Entertainment System. I love Super Mario Brothers 2. I know a lot of people, this is a thing, apparently... Because it's weird. A lot of people don't like it. There's a whole backstory to that. But I've always loved it. Just like Castlevania Simon's Quest. Another Simon's Quest reference. There's a, It seems like there's a lot of them popping up. <laughs> in this video. Uh, it's like the off one. But Super Mario Brothers 3. It was just so massive. Like, that was, that was like a game changer. Like, I remember going to the mall. Do you remember the player's choice machines? You remember them? You stick a quarter in, you could play a video game on Nintendo, a Nintendo game for three minutes on one quarter. No. You could play Mario. I only remember Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Mario. But it was like, that was amazing. Like, the number of levels, there got to be 60, 70 levels in this game. If not, there, there's so much going on. Like, they took everything from the first two and just upped it. And I love when people up it, you know? Yeah. Like, you take, like, what works, and then you just take it to another level. Uh, so many secrets. They're still finding stuff today. I think people on the internet are still finding, like, hidden stuff to this day. Solid platforming. The controls were dead on. Everything. Uh, you had power-ups. You know, you get a frog suit. There's warp whistles. Of course, everybody knows the warp whistles. You needed them. To a point, you needed them. Uh, and of course, the icon iconic. The, you get the raccoon tail, which helps you fly. Oh, which, okay, yeah. Which is a very classic picture. Yeah. And for some reason, a raccoon... Makes you fly. I never understood that. But uh, I love the music is great. Everything's great. There's so, there's like nothing wrong to say about this game. Yeah. I love the map screens. Like you know me, I love maps. Castlevania three had a great map screen. Castlevania one. Uh, great map screen. I love the map screen. The music. That was a that was a, that's iconic now. Great. Love it. This game aged very well. Like, sometimes it's hard when you're older to go back and play a game you never played from that era. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's hard. But this game, I could see people that never played it going back, and I think they would... They would absolutely dig it. Like, really? Yeah, I think it's so iconic. Everything's perfect. Like I, like I said, I don't have one complaint about this game. Nothing. Hmm. Another God of War three. God of War three. Now there is a little bit of a backstory to this. And you're involved in that backstory. When I was sitting there and I was playing Scarface, got done that. I remember sitting there asking you, any games out there that I, you know, you think I'd be interested in? And you sat there and said, yeah, Yo, you should try this game out. I was like, all right. Went and bought a copy of it. Bought God of War. I remember calling you because I got stuck at the spiked room. 
where you have to go and you have to move the box around in a, in, in a certain amount of time where the spikes come up through the floor. Yeah. And you sat there and I called you and you told me, hey, try this out. And it worked in that. That, that game hooked me. Yeah. Got done playing. First one, went on to the second one. 2010 is when the third one came out for the PS3. You know God of War 2, you had a special actor in the game. And I was, when they did 3, I couldn't believe they got him to do 3. Harry Hamlin did. Harry Hamlin, that was who... From yeah, Clash of the Titans. Clash of the, the classic. <laughs> Clash and of the who Titans. Who did he play? Ray Harryhausen, I love, yeah. Perseus, right? Perseus. In, in the second one. That door was my only escape. So who do they go and get in the third one? They get Kevin Sorbo. And who, who did play who who did Kevin Sorbo play? In the 90s, Hercules. Listen, that game, and you know this, starts off right from the start. You're going after Poseidon. You're on. If I'm remembering, remembering right, because it's it's been that long since I played it, you're on Gaia's back, and you're going after Poseidon. Now, in part <laughs> two, you get all the Titans together, right, to go up, up Mount Olympus to after the gods, after and that the stuff. gods. But you're you're, is it not Poseidon who comes out first? Oh yeah, he's for, yeah. yeah. Which, by the way, is probably one of the greatest boss battles in any video game. And I will be playing it shortly because I'm play- replaying all the God of Wars and that stuff for the new one. But I mean, right there it starts off, I mean, you're sitting there saying it's one of the greatest boss battles. You're fighting everything that you go through. If you like God of War 1 and 2, you're going to love God of War 3. They remastered it for uh, PS4 and that stuff. So whatever they had to do, the inva- enhancements and all that stuff. But I mean, just it's just the little things in games that just make it so much better for me when I sit there and I play a game. Having Kevin Sorbo play Hercules in a God of War game. <laughs> and what is it? Uh, it's the... Uh, when you go and you defeat him, it's the lion uh, yeah. gloves, yep. or, and yep. where they're kind of like hammers and that stuff. You just go around beating yep. the hell out of everybody in that. I mean, come on. And technically, just... Hercules and Kratos are brothers. Yes. Hello. This is not between us, Hercules. Isn't it? You were always Zeus's favorite. The air on Olympus affects your thinking, brother. Zeus has no favorites. Think about it, brother. Yeah, yeah brother, but they're really, yeah. Because what was it? it was well, Zeus would have been their dad and then different moms. And yeah, Obviously, I was gonna say Zeus was basically screwing everything that he could screw around. I mean, what was it? Clash of the Titans. He was wasn't Perseus like his another oh, one yeah. of his son or something like that. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. It's been a little bit since I watched Clash of the Titans. But which which one? We'll, we'll go over that one. And see, we have, we got to do a video on that. Which is the better Clash oh, yeah. of the Titans? Oh, uh, there was a lot of controversy around God of War three. What do you mean? If you remember, because no. At the end of part two, after Kratos gets all the Titans together yeah. to climb Mount Olympus, it stopped. Yeah. And people were like, that was like a thing. Like, people complained about, like, you only gave us half a game. But they really? left it on a cliffhanger. Yeah, that was a whole thing. You can go look that up. I remember all that in real time. But that was... I have never that's heard That's why part three started off. You're right up there. Like, you're... Yeah. But then Gaia, the, the Titans screw you over. Right. So now Kratos is like, well, I got to take out the Titans and the gods. Like, that was like... But they couldn't fit that all in one game. That was cool. They did the same thing with Soul Reaver. 
which I never played the second one because by that point I moved on. But Soul Reaver ended it like right after a boss fight that really? was never finished. And then some words, just I remember some words just came up. And it was like, what happened here? I'm going to have to look that up because I never knew that. But by the time the second Soul Reaver came out, I guess I didn't care. I should have cared. But the first Soul Reaver, that was a classic to me. They should remake that or redo something, HD or whatever. I've, I've heard some uh, people calling for that. One thing I did, uh, on a little bit of a side note before we continue with yours, if you do like God of War 3, remember this. Stig Asmussen, he was the director for God of War 3. So if you like God of War 3, you're going to like Jedi Fallen Order because he's a director for that game too. And I also think he is directing the second part to Jedi Fallen Order. So, and if you played the Star Wars game, you actually, there there's a lot of stuff in that game that reminds me a lot of what he had in God of War and uh, God of War 3 in that. So, just, you know, a little side note. If you didn't, uh, you, like I said, you like God of War 3, check out Jedi Fallen Order. I remember video games kind of slowed down right around the time God of War came out. Before God of War came out. Okay. And my dad had a copy, he had a demo copy of God of War. I have no idea where he got this. I have no idea, but it came like like in a DVD cardboard case. And he's like, yeah, you should check out this game. Really? And I remember playing, you know, you're on the boat in the first one and you fight the the three-headed Levi, uh, Leviathan thing, or Hydra. Yeah. yeah there's a Hydra. Uh, and I'm like, this game's amazing. I don't know what happened to that demo. He probably sold it. But man, I wish I had that. I remember you sitting up I here. I wish I had that. That was like... Playing the hell out of it. And I at, at yeah. first, I was sitting here, I was like, yeah. Hey, that you know. first boss fight, it was like, uh, okay, you got to turn the wheel, the oh, analog, yeah. or the, yeah. You got to turn the sticks, hit button. It was like, yo. And yeah. then that turned into a rage, like. I was just about to say, because. You got to hit um, X at a certain moment. In time, I'm playing like, God of War Ascension, and I've already broken three controllers, so. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> that is horrible. Uh, yeah. Just stop. Like you said rage. Stop throwing them. Uh, no. I got, of course, classic Tomb Raider. The original Tomb Raider, 1996 for the PlayStation. Okay. The first 3D game I ever played. That's the one. It wasn't Mario. It was definitely Tomb Raider. But of course, the game turned Lara Croft into a cultural icon. Oh, yeah. She was everywhere. Like, that That was a thing. Yeah. Back then and playing that. And then going from, like, uh, Yoshi's Island on Super Nintendo to Tomb Raider. That's like a little bit of a jump. It was like going from Zelda on Super Nintendo to N- Nintendo 64. It's like, it, it was like, like people can't comprehend it now, I guess, but that was mind blowing back then. Mm-hmm. Like actually running around, the controls are a little wonky. And nobody's disputing that. There's no... It, it was funky. Mm-hmm. Very funky. Uh, but you eventually you got used to them. The level design... You, you kind of didn't know what to do exactly. But the cool thing... Just as I've said before... And about atmosphere... Uh, just running around exploring tombs... Like, there was a sense of isolation and being alone. Like, there wasn't there wasn't a lot of music. It was more like ambient effects, which I, I love that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, there wasn't, because if you got stuck on a level for an hour, you didn't want to hear that same song. So it was just like, you know, you hear a cave, 
something happening. You know, it's kind of hard to explain, but uh, the flute at the title screen. That's probably one of the most classic pieces of video game music ever made. Uh, love it. Uh, eventually they remade it. The remake was okay. But the original, playing it in the mid-90s, like a 3D world, like you're actually moving through levels, not from a side of a TV to the other side, actually moving through a level. That was amazing. And of course, they they eventually they overkilled it. You know, they busted out a game every November for a couple years, but then they redeemed themselves with the last trilogy, the 2013 trilogy. Yeah, that was that trilogy. Uh, but yeah, but the original, that always holds a special place. Oh, yeah. Well, the originals to me. always do. Yeah. It's it's just like movies and that stuff. Yeah. yeah. You can have your remakes, but nothing beats the original in that. Last one I got Last of Us. I know there's, uh, you know, the remake that just came out. I haven't played that, but I've played the PS4 version. I will sit there and say, here's another one of those. I got it for Christmas when it originally came out for the PS3. Never played it. Bought the PS4, found out they remastered it. They gave you the Left Behind DLC uh, with the remastered version. I was like, you know what? I'll trade the PS3 version in, get the PS4. Bought it. Did not play this game until a friend of mine sat there and said, did you ever play this? I'm like, no. He's like, you are like missing out on one of the greatest games ever, ever made. Yeah. I'm like, okay, no, there's no such thing as that. There's not, nothing out there is going to top what God of War has done for me. Sat down and I played it. First, what is it, 15 minutes? If you have kids, again, this is the second game that actually made me sit there and cry. Because of what happens to his daughter, spoiler alert, she gets shot. All this chaos is happening. You know, um, the clickers or whatever they're turning into. Uh, starts breaking out, you run, you have your daughter, daughter gets shot. Very heartbreaking. But then, you know, you pick up the story with Ellie and, you know, Joel, Joel. having yeah. take, you know, her to where the fireflies are at for surgery and that stuff. The atmosphere, uh, them going and actually doing research on, uh, they didn't take the typical zombie. This reminded me a lot of a movie I absolutely hated the first time I ever saw it, but then I watched it more and more. It's a movie that you love. Love. 12 Monkeys. No, but it's in the same, same kind of realm. Invasion of the Body Snatchers? No. Oh, I have no idea. 28 Days Later. 28 Days, yes. I hated that movie. Really? Hated it because it was like, well, these weren't zombies. But the thing is, is t- technically they yeah they are th- th- they're not but, dead. They're just mindless. And what what is the reason? It's like it's like a rabies uh, that you know they get bit or you know the saliva whatever it is. But that's kind of the way the Last of Us came off. This disease that caused the clickers and that stuff. This is something that is found in... It's actually real. Yeah, it's it's in insects. Yeah. And that's that's an amazing thing to where... And we talked about Rockstar and how great Rockstar is. And everything that they put into their story and, and their world and that stuff. Again, Naughty Dog. We know about the Uncharted franchises. I never played a Jack and Daxter. Just putting that out there. I will. But I played the Uncharted's and that stuff. But then... They just did something totally different when it came to The Last of Us. It was like they took a real world concept. Yeah. That a lot of people didn't know. I didn't know about, like, there was fungus in the world that did that. Right. But then when you start looking into, like, 
parasites that get into your brain. Right. That's probably the least scariest one. Oh yeah. That's oh. like a whole world. You get into that stuff. There was like a there's years videos ago, on stuff like I read something that the deer were getting some kind of a disease where it was actually eating the insides and they would burst. Yeah. And their insides would be all rotten and decayed and it it was just some kind of disease that they got. Or something stuff. like a fungus to actually like it knows what it's doing to you. Right. To control you to get what it wants. Right. So weird. That could have came out of a 50 sci-fi movie. But that, they took a real world thing and made it, well, what if it jumped to people? Right. Oh, and this one, it wouldn't even have lasted that 15 minutes. And that, that's in, the in, thing in the that I of that love video about game. the That story. would have lasted three minutes. Done. It's, Everybody's done. But then you go back to, like I was saying, with 28 Days Later. It's it's sort of a rabies strain. You're taking something. It's not, oh, uh, well, you know, the military de- de- uh, devised this, which 28 days later, it was kind of military-ish or whatever. But they took something real, and they made it that, hey, you know what? If you don't watch out, this could possibly happen. You don't know what people were working on. Yeah. Last of Us right here. That's something right Part there. Part 2 that, was more military. Yes. Part yeah. 1 was more... Of 28 days, I'm talking. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but that was like, that is, ex- I remember saying one time to somebody, I'm like, in 28 weeks later, that is exactly how that would go down. Like when they start bombing, firebombing yes. the city, they got the snipers, then they're going out with flamethrowers and the gas. That is exactly how that right. would happen. I would think, I mean, I have no military. They burn everything. But they would just clear, they would just clear it. Yeah. You got to clean, you got to take out the problem. Yeah. And how, how do you do it? You kill it with fire. Everything they kill with fire and that stuff. Yeah. But, I mean, right there, like I said, Last of Us, I put 150 hours into it. Now, I did, Really? You know, yeah. It was a I great game. Terrifying at moments. Played it seven times. You know, the, uh, oh my God, it's the uh, basement where you have to go down, turn the generator on. When you turn the generator on, this is the first time where you you uh, go against a bloater, and the freaker the not the freakers that's from days gone, but the clickers are all around, and you gotta go turn the generator on. The generator doesn't go on the first time, but here all of a sudden the clicker comes after you, and another one comes after you. You gotta take them out. Yeah. Then you start the generator. Then you have to run all the way into the hallway, getting away from the bloater. There's a key card. That you gotta grab to go and put into the room so you can get the hell out of there. What that's one of the freakiest parts right there in that stuff. So anyway, Last of Us, fantastic game. If you never played it, play it. Yeah, I like how they gave you options too. You could yeah. either go in stealth, go in action. Yeah. Normally stealth worked out better. I was gonna say stealth really but, worked out for me. And then of course the classic giraffe. Oh, a thing yeah, going towards, on. Yeah. yeah. I finally got around to playing it. I still have my PlayStation 3 version, which my dad gave me. Really? Yeah, I still have that. I didn't play. I played the beginning. But then when I got PlayStation 4, of course, that re-release. Right. And I was like, oh, you know what? I'll check this one out. And it was like, it's like playing a movie. Oh, yeah. It's literally a movie. Like, yeah. And I got to get around to playing part two. That's on, that's on my list. Uh but uh, my last one, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, 1997 for the released for the PlayStation. I cannot stress how much I love this game. This was one of the first three games I bought when I bought a PlayStation. Love this game. It's the game that coined the term Metroidvania. Which, if anybody doesn't know what that means, it just means exploration. You gotta get an ability or an item to open up something over here. You gotta go back over here. It's 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 perfect. And I just realized, like a week ago, it turns twenty five this year. Really, twenty five? Yes. Uh, I play this game every October, minimum. 
I play this game once a year. It's not like an every three year thing. It's like every year. But uh, you play as Alucard. They switched it up in this Castlevania. You play as Alucard, Dracula's son, from part three. Which was first on my list. Uh, cool thing. Eventually you get power-ups. In the first, in Castlevania 3, you could only turn into a bat. Now in this one, you can turn into mist, a wolf, and a bat. Oh, wow. You know, to solve puzzles, get get through stuff. Uh, it's a direct sequel to Rondo of Blood, which I didn't play until 08. Because that's a whole nother story. Japan got Rondo of Blood. We got Castlevania Dracula X. Completely different game. That's a whole nother thing. Uh, the atmosphere, like I was saying about the Batman games, this the atmosphere in this game is 11. Like, everything's perfect. Like, the music, running around a castle, going under a castle... In catacombs and stuff. It's amazing. The music, I own the soundtrack. I bought the soundtrack like 25 years ago. It was like this, I have to own this. I have to own anything that says Castlevania Symphony of the Night on it. That's one of those things. But some of the details, I always thought were cool. At one part, uh, there's a section called the Outer Wall. Sometimes when you go there, it's raining. Sometimes when you go there, it's foggy. So they were like switching it up. I always thought that was cool. At the bottom of the outer wall, there's a telescope you can look through. And you look out over a lake, which most Castlevania games are kind of near a lake. Uh, but sometimes you see a boatman. Uh, sometimes you don't, but sometimes you see him. Eventually you meet him down in the un- uh, underground waterway. I thought that was cool because I always thought it was the boatman from Castlevania uh, Simon's Quest. And another one. I got another one in there. Uh, here, I, it might be, but maybe not. But uh, I always thought that was cool. Like every time you went to the telescope, it was different. Sometimes you might just see a fish jump. Sometimes you might not be there. But uh, uh, one enemy is called an owl knight. It's a, it's a big knight with an owl on his shoulder, and he sends the owl out. But if you kill the owl, the knight runs over and like he like mourns it. And that's when you can get some hits in on him. I always thought that was cool. And, really? and this year when I played, I was like, what happens when I kill the knight first? After 25 years, it took me this long. What happens when you kill the knight first? So here I kill the knight first. Here the owl will come down and land and like mourn him. It's so cool. It's just one of those little... Little things. And then when you're in the royal chapel, this is a church, obviously a chapel, uh, there's bells hanging. You can jump on the bells and they'll move and ring. I always thought that was cool. Uh, And then uh, still up in the royal chapel, there's a confession booth. You can go in and sit in the confession booth and a priest will come out. And I don't know if this is random but uh, he'll close the curtain and sometimes stick a spike through the confession to hurt you. But then sometimes he'll bless you. I don't know what what causes it, but then if you run around and jump on his side, a girl comes down. Like a ghost of a female will come down and start crying. Yeah, it's weird. And there's a whole thing with Castlevania games with chairs. I don't know. If anybody can explain that to me. Yeah, it's there's a lot of chair references in... And then, uh, uh, Bloodstain. There's like, yeah, it's weird. I don't know what's going on. There's there. references from for Castlevania that are in Bloodstain. Oh, there's many, many Castlevania Is it references. The same guy who did uh, Castlevania that did that... Symphony of the Night. Yes. Oh wow. Ega. Uh, cool thing is you can get cloaks. Like unlike the fur, the other Castlevanias, you actually get like items, like a lot of items in this game. But depending on the color of your cloak, when you turn into a bat, that's what color your bat is. I always thought that was amazing. Some of the weapons in the game, uh, a lot of people didn't know this at the time, but if you do a quarter turn or a half turn, 
swords have abilities. Like some of the weapons have abilities. Uh, sometimes you'll teleport to the other side of the screen to hit something from behind. Or you summon skeletons. That was an awesome one. Uh, and if you have the shield rod and the shield equipped in both hands and you hit both buttons at the same time, it does like it'll clear out a screen of enemies. It'll give you ability, like it raise your luck or intelligence. That was a, like a little secret oh, yeah. they threw in there. Like you just kind of had to find that stuff on your own. Uh, a lot of cool things in this game. I always thought were cool. Every enemy dies in a different way. Like sometimes they'll just explode or like wither away. Or like turn to ash or get cut in half. Like it was like every enemy. And there's like 150 enemies in this game. So they had to go through and like they just don't disappear like in the other Castlevanias. Uh, of course the boatman. When you meet him and it's like, oh, it's from Rondo of Blood. Not Simon's Quest. The boatman, was, I always thought that was cool. That was always cool. It, it was like, like a River Styx. Uh, Charon thing. Okay. You know, uh, one of the coolest things I loved about this game in the after the Royal Chapel boss fight, Maria, this uh, woman comes out. You play as her in Rondo of Blood, but she's a little child. Here she's grown up. It's like 10 years later or something. Uh, she says to you, do you know the name Richter Belmont? And Alucard goes, of the Belmont clan? And here a thought bubble pops up above him. And it looks like the pixels from Castlevania 3. Like, because he remembers Trevor Belmont. Oh, wow. I thought that, that blew my mind in 97. I was like, that, I was like, do people still remember Castlevania 3? You know, because back then, video games weren't like they are today. Like, it was like, yeah, just, it, it was different. How long like, of a period was there in between 3 and, and Symphony? 3 was 89 and Symphony was 97. Almost 10 years. So there was a good gap in there. But seeing those pixels of Trevor, that was like, oh my God. So, Yeah. So cool. And then uh, here in Rondo of Blood, you see him in uh, Dracula X. Uh, but there's a thing called the Behemoth, which is basically a rotted zombie giant bull thing. He chases you in the first level. Well, here in Symphony of the Night, in the Coliseum level, you see him in the background dead. Well, he's, he actually died. It was like a little reference, like like try to connect the two, I guess. It was like uh, if you ever played uh, Mega Man 2. In Mega Man 2, you fight a dragon, like a giant robotic dragon. Here in Mega Man 8, in the first level, you're running along a beach. You see that dragon dead with palm trees growing out of it. Like it's been sitting there a while. And it's like, man, they connected... Mega Man 2 to Mega Man 8. Like in that little way. I, th I always thought that was very cool. Uh, another thing, in the reverse library. There's a library. But then there's a reverse library. The bosses you fight. You fight Cypher, Trevor, and Grant. From Castlevania 3. Like the people you could pick up. You fight like doppelgangers of them. That was, so now it's like all Castlevania 3 is in this game. Like the cast of that game is in this game. Very cool. Uh, and sadly, it was the last time you ever saw Grant, the pirate. He never made an appearance in any other game that I know of. Any Castlevania game. He wasn't mentioned in the, the Netflix cartoon, which was amazing, by the way. I think you know that. Uh yeah, you never saw him again. And in the reverse library, 
if anybody really knows this game, there's a very cool Wizard of Oz reference. What? Which somebody pointed out to me years ago. I would have never thought of it. But, yeah, there's a Wizard of Oz reference in there. Oh, and then wow. here in the... Uh, if you get the right items and do all the castle and use those items in the right places, here the whole castle flips. So now, after playing this game for hours, you have to do the whole castle over again. But it's upside down with different music, different enemies, harder, different bosses. So it's like, oh, you might think you beat the game. Oh, no, you didn't. You're only halfway through this, but it, by that point, you already know the castle well enough because you've been all over it. So you should be able to work your way around the inverted one. But uh, the only complaint I would have with this game, and like I said, the music's amazing. Control, you get familiars to help you. Everything's amazing. The atmosphere, the final boss fight with Dracula is kind of not that good. It's kind of not good. Yeah. Why? It's kind of not good. He's sitting in a chair the whole time. Like a throne, and he comes out. And by that point, if you know how to use the shield rod and the shield, you can kill him in like 10 seconds. What? Yeah, it's like, yeah. Kind of disappointing. Kind of like Batman Arkham uh, Asylum. Like when you fight, like the game was all great, but then the Joker fight came up. It's okay. Not the greatest. It's they, one of them deals. They put all their energy into everything else and then they just kind of yeah. like slacked off when it came to But it works. I guess for Arkham, it worked. Yeah. Like, because then you see where it went. But this, it, it just seemed like underwhelming, I thought. Huh. But there is a cool uh, coming out of Dracula's chair, you see an alien head. From the movie Aliens. I always thought what? that was a little... Like, Castlevania stuff has hidden stuff everywhere in those games. Like, little references here and there to stuff. Like, I just said, The Wizard of Oz. And then here in his chair, there's an alien head coming out. <laughs> and, of course, people like us, like, we, you know, you know, we grew up in the 80s. We would, we know that, so... That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. But definitely... Definitely my, that would be my number one game, I think, yeah. Wow. Symphony of the Night. Nice. And that about does it for this video. I am Doomsayer. I'm Darth. And in the comments, let us know some of the best games you ever played. Thanks for watching. See you next time.